Real true education, not fake news. You're welcome back. It's Bank Holiday Monday, May Bank Holiday, the 4th of um, May. 4th of May, and we'll do this one indoors, and it's going to be very quick, so not take long to get looking at it. Uh, there are a lot of people who give me a thumbs down, and there are a lot of people who hate the campaign I have, because, because they have this vision of a utopic world, where we can have all the great things we want, and generate it from the weather. And uh, the film Planet of the Humans um, hits at that, and, and that's only what I've been saying for a long time. And would you believe it? Among the criticism I get online and people sending me messages and things is, my hands are dirty, right? Oh, your hands are dirty. Therefore, your message is, is not right. So if I have clean, sparkly, white hands like this, <coughs> excuse me, my message would be good. Well, the reason they're dirty is that I have hobbies. And one of them I'm working on the moment is this little Villiers engine that's put up on a blue can there, you see that. It's a little Villiers engine. And this is a small little engine. It's only um, it's only about that height and that size. And it's the Villiers were made engines for garden equipment, four-stroke engines. And it's a lovely little thing. And I bought it for 30 euros at the Variety Mart, but it had problems. And I've been working at it. And of course... On the farm, you do take a break on the bank holiday weekends, uh, but you, then you end up doing this sort of stuff. And uh, the idea is to get it going, put it on a pedestal, and I've had it totally dissembled and checked it out and got it cleaned out and looked at the little faults that's in it. I'm still trying to get parts. One of the things is this little little uh, filter that goes on here, a bit difficult to get, and I may have to make parts. But eventually, if I got it going, I'd like to try and build a generator with it using this uh, Stator out, out of a, a, a little commercial um, generator. It's very heavy. It's quite heavy. This is, oh, this is eight or nine kilos weight. But the thing about it is, anyway, it has a wound rotor, and the idea is that I'll be able to join these together and make it into a synchronous motor where the power will be put in and out to vary the output. So it's going to be a project at some stage, if it ever gets on. And uh, people may not understand why people do the like of this. My father was at the very same thing. I have the full of a cart, a full of a cart trailer of projects he had, some finished and some never finished. But the thing about these hobbies is you're never bored. The mind is always thinking, even when you can't do it. And it's a great pity, you know, that uh, all our other activities gets in the way. And it was the same with my father. He'd be keeping the farm running and he'd be talking about this and he'd want to get down there. There's never enough hours in the day. People who have a hobby based on the like of that are blessed in my view and wives that have husbands into these hobbies are blessed because he's not in the pub he's not in the he's not in the bookies unless there's something good on and uh, you know where he is when he's out in the garage and apart from being out in that lovely environment in the earlier films with the with the forest bushes and the wind bushes and the lovely yellow being in the in the workshop quietly making things with your equipment is surely one of life's greatest pleasures in my opinion but other people wouldn't see it like that this is 15e and uh, we're just carrying this called climate bend the rules climate led bend the rules now here's a recent report and it's only it's only out a couple of days I don't know if it's the thing on it uh, i printed these because uh, there's it's the third of may to oh yeah i meant to say why i told you that is that's why my hands are dirty i don't use gloves i don't mind a bit of dirt on my hands and they're dirty so what it's old waste oil lovely good and if people don't like it, that's their problem. But it's not a problem for me, and it doesn't take away from anything I say, because the person, in my opinion, who can um, who can make and build these things will understand their workings and work, understand the workings of uh, an electrical generating system. Okay. So anyway, folks, if you get away from that, we'll always have begrudges, and there's a lot of people have a lot to lose by blowing the renewable energy program out the window. Imagine if that goes. What, what, how we'll be saved. In actual fact, when there's no wind blowing, you're getting cheaper electricity because they don't have to pay them. Now, anyway, this report is dated the 3rd of the 5th, 2000. And it's called Facing Economic Disaster, the EU declared oil and gas are no longer fossil fuels. <laughs> Ah, oh, Jenny Mac, we need a good laugh. Now, bear in mind, the EU would be forcing Ireland to cut back on fossil fuels. We can't have oil. Oh, we have to go electric cars. 
oh we can't get gas either like it's cleaner but you're relying on a tap or pipe in from Britain and it could it could run out and it does emit CO2 you've got to get away from that we've got to go to zero carbon so how did they do it <laughs> it's a clear oil and gas not to be fossil fuel at all <laughs> I don't know do you laugh. I don't know do you think people see the fun of that. I just think that's hilarious, right? So, <laughs> so push comes to shove. They're leaving coal. Oh, it, it's dirty looking. Oh, so go get rid of it. They're leaving lignite, which Germany's burning. <laughs> and they're declaring oil and gas are no longer fossil fuels. So this is out of the Financial Times, folks. Financial Times, oh no. Oh. <laughs> this is the Financial Times. <laughs> so it can't be right. Don't just read it here. As Europe faces economic catastrophe due to the shutdown of most of its businesses and industries, EU officials have decided to protect cheap oil and gas from green campaigners who are trying to shut down all industries that continue to use fossil fuels. And that's the net zero... <laughs> The net zero policy. So we're going to get net zero policy. We're going to get zero emissions because of coronavirus. It's such a pity anyone has to die from it. It is because it's a blessing in disguise. It is such a pity. So we're going to be out uh, 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 growing cabbages and eat, eating lettuce, what the Greens wanted, much quicker than we thought. The Lord does move. In mysterious ways. There's no doubt about it. But just to give you another look at it for the laugh here. Facing economic disaster, the EU declares oil and gas to be no longer fossil fuels. <laughs> Comedy's gone from the radio and the television because of political correctness. Because of political correctness. But comedy's back. <laughs> comedy, you can't keep comedy down. <laughs> As the EU faces economic catastrophe due to the shutdown of most businesses and industries, EU officials have decided they have decided to protect cheap oil and gas from green campaigners who are trying to shut down all industries that continue to use fossil fuel. Wouldn't it be great if all industries did shut down and let them starve for a while? <laughs> Get Greta, break Greta loose even more with. <laughs> now I'm banned off uh, Twitter because I criticise Greta Thunberg. Yeah, this, this is the only medium I'm allowed on, and I have to be very careful. Now, Angela Merkel has been pushing green energy. She closed down the nuclear plants because she was afraid of a tsunami, like that got in Fukushima in Japan. And yet Germany has a very small part of coast. In fact, it's highly unlikely to be enough water to make a, a tsunami, tsunami <laughs> in Germany. But she shut them down. She was going to show off. So what does she think of this? Oh... I'll tell you, the Germans, they pushed energy windily. And what did they think of it? Can you guess? <laughs> the German Chancellor, now this is published on the 20... On the, twi on the 27th of the 11th, 19. This is a while ago. So this predates this decision. And it's by Ju Julian Willegreen from Clean Energy Wire, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel has said she disapproves of the EU's investment bank decision. The EU Investment Bank. That's the European Investment Bank, EIB, decision to ban funding for natural gas projects by the end of 2021, after the German government agreed to new guidelines. So here is a couple of years ago, uh, no, sorry, sorry, it's not that long ago. It's uh, it's only a few months before coronavirus. It's about four months ago. Is it five five months? Last November, two thousand nineteen. Here's the German Chancellor. I'm just criticising the European Central Bank for cutting finance to fossil fuel, and it's ended lending. Right. And then we have, <laughs> then we have um, this previous report. Now they're going to call gas and oil not fossil fuel. It's green. <laughs> and I tell you one thing: 
compared with uh, the revelations in the Planet of the Human Humans by Jeff Gibbs and Michael Moore, there's no doubt uh, gas and oil is cleaner than mowing out the whole forest and all the rascality they're doing and all the environmental destruction. Could you make it up? Folks, this page wouldn't print. Now, a couple of years ago, the energy regulator, a lady, I can't think of her name, but she was on the radio, I heard of myself, and she was after uh, taking away the license to generate from a Dublin power plant. And an EU directive has said that uh, uh, slow, traditional slow burning plants cannot be licensed anymore. So that, that they're against uh, the, the traditional plants, which are efficient to the degree of up to 75%. So a combined cycle gas turbine, which makes energy electricity in the first cycle out of, out of the flue gases and then heats the, the the water to make energy again is about 73 or 4 percent efficient it's a very efficient plant as is a heat condensing steam plant steam plant but the eu decided to ban it right we don't want any more of that and the eu is largely driven by angela merkel so the uh, Huntsdown power stations, two of them in Dublin, one of them was refused a license in the middle of it all, and the owner said, I don't know what they've done, they said they shut down altogether. So they shut, they shut down these plants. So now we have the ESB, uh, ESB, largest plants. Now, I don't know, can you see that? Uh, yeah, this is independent business, and we'll try and get you a link to it, because I know it's, I know it's a bit difficult. This is an article by Fergal O'Connor. Fergal O'Connor. Folks, the reason I shout is to make sure you hear me because I watch YouTube videos on how to fix cars and things and I can't hear the people. Please don't think I'm, I'm, I'm being angry with you, please. This is by Fergal O'Connor. I also repeat myself because, again, if you don't hear it the first time, you have a better chance the second. And please do not um, think that I'm being, I'm being uh, bullish. I don't, I don't mean to be like that. So Fergal O'Connor on the 3rd of May 2020 announces this in the, in the Irish Independent Business section. And what it says is that the ESB has lodged plans for a 75 megawatt so-called peaker plant. Now, this is the first cycle only of the gas plant. This is fast acting. It's 35% efficient. So they call it peaker plant uh, in Dublin that will help electrical grid to cope with the increased amounts of renewable energy. So as I made in the earlier visit videos, <laughs> we already have far more than we could ever deal with. But there's still, the answer to the intermittency of wind is not to stop building it, it's to build more electricity plants. The new plant at Cordoff, that's there near Blanchardstown, is being de de developed as a peaking power plant to service the Greater Dublin Evening Peak Power Demand. We never had any trouble before. We had uh, the same demand now, and we have less with coronavirus for for decades, and we never had a problem. So what they're doing is now they're relying on the windmills, and if, and they're trying to maintain if the windmills aren't there, but the windmills won't be there for eighty percent of the time, or eighty percent capacity. In other words, in other words, the wind turbines are only eighty percent capacity, and you can only use sixty five percent of the capacity in the grid. It is part of Airgrid's integrated single electricity market auction system for electricity on the island of Ireland. So I don't know how they're going to do, will they head out to private enterprise or not? The principal purpose of peaking plants such as Cordoff is to provide flexible generation. It is capable of ramping up and down rapidly. Now if you look at all my videos going away back, I have always claimed that one of the big misunderstandings about wind energy and solar energy is that it forces plant to run inefficiently. It forces the, the combined cycle uh, gas turbine efficient plant and the condensing steam plant uh, to run um, inefficiently. And as a result, the savings you get from the wind are, 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 are neutralized. Right. So what it's also doing, it's forcing the grid operators to install fast plant, which is only 33 to 4% efficient. So the efficiency of the overall uh, conventional power plant uh, is reduced. The amount of it is increased, 
but the emissions are the same because the emissions from this type of plant here are far greater. And it's anything, only admit, this won't work. So planning documents said that, that subject to permission, Cardiff plant will begin uh, operation in 2022. A spokesman said the plan was fully aligned with the ESB's brighter future strategy for transition and supporting the move to low carbon electricity. Now, what is low carbon? Remember now that last year, like 2018, we had no wind generation from the 20th of May to the 20th of September. None, right? We had none yesterday. And this is a transition. Supporting the move to carbon electricity to low carbon electricity. This plan is aimed at removing coal and peat from the ESB's energy mix. And then why don't they just go to gas? <coughs> and why is Angela Merkel trying to save gas? Gas is much less um, emitting, emits much less than coal or peat. The problem with gas for Ireland is it all comes in through a pipe and if that pipe gets cut off you have no nothing else. And with electric cars it's also reliant on gas. With the tendering process on the way the ESB is not in a position to disclose the value of these projects. Now bear in mind this is 75 megawatts. This one. But they're putting in four of them. Right? I don't know, can you see it there, folks? 75. It's not easy for me to get this up here. Right. Anyway, 75, you can take my word for it. So four of them is 300 megawatts. So we already have a, about 150 megawatts under double the capacity we need. Or just almost on tw a total of 12,000 megawatts. The winter peak demand is 5 thousand megawatts and in fairness you do need a thousand or even fifteen hundred of a reserve there. Right? So we'll say six and a half we'll say even seven thousand would be alright. We wouldn't complain about it too much. So we're on about eleven, nine, twelve and we're gonna put in three hundred more of fossil fuel plant. So as this transition gets on the way we see more and more fossil fuel plant being built and clearly whoever runs it is going to have to make a profit so it's going to be running. <coughs> so you'll end up, and, and they're going to build at least another thousand of wind, you'll end up with about 13,500 megawatts of total generation capacity being paid for by a country which only needs on average 3,500 megawatts. Winter peak demand 5,000 5, megawatts and on, on a summer's night 2,000 megawatts. All to be paid for. All must break even. All must make a bit of a profit. And that is impossible. And I draw attention to Cormac Lucy's article in yesterday's uh, Sunday Times. In which he says the green dream and green goals are unattainable. And they're unattainable. And we see already uh, Germany pulling back while Ireland is push above our weight. Oh, we'll show them. We're leading. We're leader. We're an energy hub. All for a bit of power to run the light. How, how can people be so thick? How can voters be so thick? And Eamon Ryan <laughs> is lined up to get back into government. <laughs> oh, gee. And you know what I hope? The quicker he gets in, the better. The quicker the green gets in, the better. Because people are go they're going to put them eating cabbage. And that's what it'll take. And funny enough, Catherine Martin, she's the second, I think, in the Green Party. She's a brother of Vincent Martin, and he got in as well the last time down in Kildare. He tried running here in Cabin and we didn't get in. Uh, she seems to be having second thoughts. Ryan mustn't have the brains to realise that if he gets in, that's the end of them. They got in before, and it was the end of them for a long time. So that's the story, folks. Uh, well, you couldn't, you couldn't make this stuff up. You couldn't make it up. You have last year Angela Merkel whinging, whinging that the European Investment Bank is stopping investment in fossil fuels. 
you have the Irish government did the same. Now we don't need fossil fuels because the economy's are hitting, going to hit rock bottom. We won't need them anyway. So we're going to get the green dream with plenty of hunger, plenty of hunger, and sitting in the cold. With, and they're going to compensate for the reduction in fossil fuels by imposing taxes on the people. And uh, we then have... <laughs> Uh, we did have uh, the hit out and what they call it here is EU regulators ludicrous exclusion of oil and gas from the de definition of fossil fuels that's the words there the, they've hit out at the ludicrous exclusion so they've said oil and gas no, not fossil fuel at all oh, oh god that's not that's green energy These little things I'd go mad, I'd go mad. <laughs> Only for some kind of a hobby to do, I'd go mad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's 15E, and uh, it just so happens I can't download them too well here. I have to get them to another place, and I do make four, three or four together. Uh, thank you for looking in. Do like them, uh, and uh, I know they take a lot of time to look at and that, but. Yeah, at least you're up to date, and, and the thing is evolving. And now with the with the economic, with the with the banks being rated down, being rated down, there's going to be a crunch for money. Where is this money coming from? They're going to print. We know they're going to print. But even will that solve it? I mean, Germany printed during the 1920s, and that led to the rise of Hitler. People are bringing their wages home in a wheelbarrow. Uh, Robert Mugabe printed in uh, Zimbabwe, and they're bringing their wages home in a wheelbarrow. And everyone says it doesn't matter. She can print a bit of money and claw it back. Uh, this is what the economists tell us. Inflation doesn't matter. You have just money, price and goods. But, I mean, you're going to see massive increases in the cost of living and no rise in pensions and nothing, no, no, the universal social charge. To, none of us will ever see it gone. And uh, we have voted for this. That's the bottom line. The people have voted for this and in my opinion, are going to continue to vote. All I am doing is bringing it to your attention and uh, maybe just to get a bit of a laugh and just to see and bring to the attention of ordinary people what, what they're at, what is actually happening behind the scenes. So bye-bye, folks, and we'll let you go, and we'll see you back, and good luck now on the 4th of May. Bye-bye.